welcome to our Tuesday morning webinar series, or for me it's morning, for you it's probably uh, throughout the day, but uh, I'm Scott Bohr, the category manager for gaming specialty products, which includes dice, role-playing games, and miniature games. And uh, today we have a very special webinar featuring um, Kelly Brumley and, and Kyle Rowan from Weird Miniatures. And uh, before we jump in and hear what they have to say, I wanted to just uh, let you know about a couple of things, features of the Zoom webinar in case you haven't been part of one of these before. If you hover your mouse over the view screen there, you'll see that there's a chat button down at the bottom. That's where we're going to be um, able to communicate with one another. If you go ahead and click on that chat window, it'll open up a window on the side and then you can type any questions you have for um, Kyle and Kelly there and then we'll be able to communicate that back to them. I'll go ahead and read the questions off so that uh, they can continue with the presentation as we go. Um, feel free to ask questions at any time. And just for attending the webinar today, you'll be able to get a, a special limited exclusive uh, model for the game uh, Malfo. And um, that'll be a special thing that most people aren't gonna be able to get held of. Um, so without further ado, I would like to go ahead and hand the presentation over to Kelly and Kyle so they can tell us all about the products coming out from Weird. Thank you, Scott. Hi, everyone. Uh, we are Weird Games. I'm Kyle. Um, and uh, we make Through the Breach. Uh, sorry, having some technical difficulties. There we go. Okay. okay. Sorry uh, about that. <laughs> so we make Through the Breach, Darkness Comes Rattling, Puppet Wars, The Other Side, and more. Uh, today we're going to uh, talk to you about our flagship game, Malifo. Well, Malifo is our miniature game. It's been around since 2009 was the first release of it. This June was the most recent release. We moved to third edition. Um, we've seen a spike in activity both with our communities and with sales just across the board. So we're going to spend a, a bit of time talking about that and going through and getting everything covered. Right. So Malifo is a story-driven skirmish-sized board game set in uh, 1900s with magic, steampunk, and horror elements. Um, and what that really means is that there's something for everybody in the game. Are you into zombies? We've got Resurrectionists. Uh, Southern Hospitality and Chaos? We've got the Bayou. Uh, magic and Machines? We've got Arcanists. Monsters and things that go bump in the night? We've got Neverborn. And that's really just scratching the surface. Um, it's a game where outwitting your opponent is more important than killing all their characters. Uh, essentially, Malifaux is a more objective-oriented game about decimating your opponent. You can win without killing a single character, and you could even win with your entire crew uh, having been destroyed in the game. So one of the things that we did with third edition that's different from everything else, you'll see right now, um, we have seven factions, as Kyle was describing, there's something for everybody. Um, we went ahead so that we could get all the stats and current characters out and up for folks as long with new ones, and we split everything out into the different faction books plus a rule book. So that's what you see right now. And unlike uh, a lot of other minis games, it doesn't require a bank loan to get started. Uh, the rules are free online. A new player only needs two or three boxes worth of models, a measuring tool, and as you can see here, uh, a deck of cards. Um, it's a standard poker deck of 54 cards. We use our own four unique suits. Um, and we have various decks uh, available for purchase. Uh, we use that deck to generate random numbers like combat or figuring out who goes first uh, instead of dice. Uh, but in order to go more into, uh, into more detail about the cards, uh, we're going to go over a quick breakdown of how Malifaux works. Um, so two players will be battling it out on a three by three table. It's covered with scenery and terrain. Uh, they'll be flipping cards from their decks to figure out how much damage they deal, uh, whether, how, uh, whether or not their actions are successful, and other interactions that they might want to make during the game. 
So most folks who play war games, they want to have terrain on the table. You don't need anything fancy. You can use what you have lying around your kitchen, around your living room. Uh, we have our own terrain line called Weirdscapes. Uh, it is a modular line. So you can see here, there's three different sections. You can switch out your building pieces, your roof pieces, anything that you really want to do. Um, we also have the the smaller terrain that you can bring straight to your base in 30s, 40s, and 50s. And on that table, players will have a handful of characters going back and forth, duking it out, claiming objectives, uh, and the player with the most points at the end in Malifaux wins. Uh, to start, though, uh, a player will need to build a crew. Um, and what you see here uh, uh, on the screen are uh, some options for building uh, a crew. So a standard crew will normally consist of anywhere between seven to 10 models, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, and it's a vital part of, of Malifaux. Uh, with third edition, we've made it super easy for a player or someone selling games at your store to understand. Uh, so there are currently seven factions with an eight, eighth coming out in 2020. And each faction has eight masters. Think of masters as kind of the leaders of your crew. And some of them even cross over into uh, multiple factions, making choices for building a crew even more accessible. Um, each master has a unique keyword associated with them. The card you see here on the screen is Summer Teeth Jones. He's a master of the bayou. Uh, his keyword is big hat. And you can see that on the card in the top left. Uh, and that's because he's got the biggest hat in the bayou and the biggest hat in the bayou runs the show. Uh, you can see it uh, right beneath uh, master and living on the text there. Uh, the keyword is kind of a focal point when building a crew. Uh, you choose a master, look at their keyword, and then you look at the other characters uh, that have that same keyword. Those are the ones that go in your crew. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, there are other things to keep in mind too. Uh, a standard game is 50 soul stones. Um, each character has a soul stone cost uh, on the top right of their card. Uh, so you need to spend close to that many soul stones to build a crew. Uh, you can go with a handful of expensive characters or loads of little ones. Um, it's, it's really entirely up to you. Uh, and there are obviously some you know, exceptions here and there, but the keyword system is the foundation of, of hiring. Uh, factions are also important because you don't just have to hire within a keyword. Once a player starts getting more comfortable with how their master plays, they can start looking at models without their master's keyword, but are in their faction to broaden play styles and preferences. But characters within a faction that don't have your master's keyword will cost one more soul stone. So it becomes an interesting choice for a player to make. Um, we currently have seven factions in the game, as I said, with uh, an eighth, co eighth coming out. Um, we have the guild. They, are, uh, they protect the citizens of Malifaux from criminals and monsters while lining their pockets with soul stones. We have the Arcanists who embrace magic and revel in its power while hiding behind miners uh, in the Steamfitters Union. We have the Outcasts. They seek existence free of law, often sell their services to the highest bidder. We have the Ten Thunders. They sneak in the shadows as an organized crime syndicate uh, and wait for their time to take over. We have the Resurrectionists. They draw upon the ne necromantic energy to invoke dark miracles that shake the balance of life and death. We have the Neverborn, who will stop at nothing until the scourge of humanity is cut from their world. We have the Bayou, uh, chaotic home to the gremlins, who prefer to drink alcohol and blow things up without anyone slapping them on their wrists. And soon, we have the, we'll have the Explorer Society. Um, so now that we know a little bit about factions and keywords, uh, it's probably time to look at Malifaux from a different perspective. Uh, how, to, how to sell the game, essentially. Um, so let's start with uh, a customer that is fairly familiar with the game, already owns a master, maybe a few characters in their keyword, but they don't know where to look for their next purchase. So each Malifaux third edition box has the keyword written on it on just about every side. You can see it on the front and in the bottom left here. Uh, so when someone asks what to buy next, all you need to do is really look for their keywords. Um, 
So let's say that a customer already has a master and the keywords or and the characters in that keyword rather. Um, they can look into an, uh, their faction next, um, or they can look into what's called the versatile characteristic. Um, versatile is uh, essentially a universal uh, word that we use within the game that uh, allows them to be hired within a crew and it doesn't cost them an extra soul stone. Uh, and they, they're really useful because they'll fit in just about any crew within that faction. Um, brand new players can start from an even simpler point of view. You know, the rule of cool. Find a master that you like aesthetically and then follow down the keyword and faction rabbit hole. Uh, we have over 40 masters in the game, so there's a ton of options to choose from. Uh, you don't even need to get multiple boxes from the start. We have a game mode called Henchman Hardcore, um, which needs fewer models on the table. Um, one box and you're good to go. Um, the Henchman Hardcore really, as Kyle was talking about, is a great place to get players started. Uh, from a store point of view, it's, it's an easy sell. Once, once those folks know what kind of character they want to play or what genre they want to play in, um, really all your sales staff needs to know is where to find the keywords and look for that faction symbol. The faction symbol is on the sides of the boxes as well as the front of the box. So the example on the screen right now, we have the guild symbol above where it says from above and then the keyword is listed right below. Um, they just need to get a few of the essentials after that. They're gonna need a deck of cards. They can get our fate decks that we sell. It's an easy add-on, or if they prefer to play with a regular deck of cards, and then they're gonna need some sort of measuring tool. So this is uh, an easy add-on sale for your staff. They can get them directed towards wherever your supplies are listed in the store. Um, we try to keep the fate decks between 12 and $13, and they have become quite the collector's item as time has gone on. So whether a new player is looking to get into the game or an experienced veteran is looking to expand their collection, uh, we support Malifaux on a monthly basis with new releases hitting store shelves. So you'll rarely have to worry about empty space or being concerned about players having bought everything. This also means that we don't have to release everything all at once, um, which we do know that can be very overwhelming for stock levels within the store. Um, the product line can be maintained without having to eat up an entire wall. You might even want to take a look at offering special orders for you know, the customers that are looking for something that you don't normally carry. And to further encourage our players to make purchases in your uh, local store, we also run regular promotions that are exclusives. So we just got done running the LGS. We will be doing this again. Um, so LGS promotions, this is where we encourage folks to come directly into your store. They spend whatever the dollar amount is. Uh, this last promotion that we ran, if they came and they bought $75 in weird product and they sent a copy of the store receipt, which includes your name and address on it to show that it was an, an actual store purchase. Uh, we go ahead and we send them out um, a special edition miniature that hasn't been released in some fashion. And so this one ended in September. We're in the process of fil fulfilling these right now. And we will be looking to do another promotion in November. So look for these throughout the year. We try to announce them ahead of time just so you kind of know what to expect. and. Um, we always make a flyer like what you see here so that if you choose to print it and display it in your store, you can do so. And in addition to regular releases and promotions, we also have multiple ways of keeping players engaged in the world uh, of Malifaux when they're not in your store, which can help lead to further sales uh, the next time they stop by. We just released the Malifaux Crew Builder app for free. Uh, it's not only a great tool for helping players build their crews, but it's a great time waster too. Searching for your characters, synergies between them, uh, and that sort of thing is, is a piece of cake. Uh, we also have our Facebook community, which is growing every day, uh, called A Weird Place. Uh, it keeps the conversation going, um, as well as our community on our forums. Uh, both are hotbeds of conversation, ranging from rules questions, painting suggestions, thoughts on our lore, and, and everything in between. 
Yeah, we're really proud of the fact that our community is considered and looked at it being one of the most positive wargaming communities out there. Um, it's great when you see somebody new join a weird place, for example, and they call out that they're new to the game. Um, you'll see those veteran players come in and, and want to help and offer suggestions. Um, it's just really great to see the community grow um, while they're playing Malifaux and just having a good time. And that community is worldwide. Um, our Malifaux third edition core rules are going to be available in seven languages very shortly. And we'll have those uh, available within the next few days. Uh, they'll be available on our website, absolutely free. So we've put a lot of effort into the translations. We felt that it was important for the community. Uh, we did this with our, one of the previous games, The Other Side. So both of the rule sets are available in French, German, Italian, Polish, Russian, and Spanish. So, um, it's just a resource that we are really proud to be able to offer world to the worldwide community. And despite wishing we could be everywhere at once, we just can't. So in order to help grow our local communities across the world, we have our henchmen program. Our henchmen are a vital part of our community. Uh, they act as organizers and teachers of our games in their neck of the woods and help build their local communities with special events and tournaments. We encourage players who are interested in the community to reach out and apply to be a henchman. Um, the same can be said in the store. While we don't necessarily encourage a store owner to apply to be a henchman, you guys got enough going on. Um, if you have somebody that's already in your store growing the community or you notice that they are doing um, a lot for the brand, encourage them to reach out and uh, become a henchman. We try to help support the program in any way that we can to make the events as successful um, in your store and with the henchmen. And Malifaux is a story-driven game, as we said, but the story doesn't even have to stop with just Malifaux. We also have an RPG in the same universe called Through the Breach. Uh, like Malifaux, Through the Breach uses a deck of cards. That deck is used by everyone. Uh, Players will be flipping cards for every, from everything for performing an action, building their character uh, with a unique tarot system and you know, everything in between. Uh, one of the things that we do with Through the Breach is we have many different types of releases. We have the core rule set, which you need to play the game, but we also follow it up with our faction books that provide new ways, new ways to play, new areas to explore, just take a look at what is new. Um, Penny Dreadfuls, they make, uh, each one is themed and it's a multi-session um, adventure. Folks can pick it up and, and run through that. The most recent one that we did was the Obsidian, Obsidian Gate. And then we also release one shots, which are digital through drive Through RPG, but it's just another way to get uh, players involved and it's just a, a real cheap resource for them to use. Uh, we do know that a lot of henchmen will run these in the store. They'll buy the one shot and then run it as a one-time event um, for our local community. And if your community is more about large-scale wargaming, we also have the other side. Uh, the other side is set in the same universe as Malifaux, but the battle is bigger and it takes place on Earth. Uh, the dark magic and creatures of Malifaux have made their way across the breach and are now causing havoc in places like London and Africa. Uh, the battlefield is continuing to grow. Uh, and while the game is large scale, accessibility was a major factor when designing the game. Like Malifaux, the, like we said, the rules are free online. Uh, the models are also pre-assembled. You just need to base them and you're good to go. Uh, allegiance boxes also make it super easy to get into the game. One allegiance box is all a player needs to start playing. In addition to the stat cards and models, it even comes with the measuring tape and fate deck. We already have the four allegiances, which you saw on the previous screen. Um, we are continuing work on the game and we will be coming out with a starter box very soon, which will include two new allegiances, the Guild and Court of Two. And after the starter box, we will have the Kimon and Three Kingdoms coming up as 2020 releases as well. And you can keep up to date on all of our games, promotions, releases uh, by, you know, signing up with our newsletter. 
Um, it's the one-stop shop for information uh, right to your email. And you can uh, sign up just by visiting our website. It's at the bottom of it. Uh, you just have to put in your email there. So we covered everything quick, just to kind of give you guys an overview. So we are looking forward to taking any of the questions that you have. Um, let us know if, we ha if you have any questions. We have a special retailer link on our, our website. So down at the bottom of the screen where you see the weird-games.net slash contact, there is a retailer forum. Those emails come in and they go straight to the people that need to take a look at the retailer contact and we can get everything sorted from that point. So we are free to take any questions that you might have. All right, well, thank you so much for the, uh, for the information, that's, that's terrific. Um, I do wanna remind everybody that uh, you, can, you can get into the chat window, whoops, let me go back here. You can get into the chat window by just hovering your mouse over the screen and then you'll have the, the chat box will show up down at the bottom, you can click on that and that'll get you the ability to type in there. Uh, once you're in there, you can, you can type a message either to just the panelists, which include myself, Kelly, and Kyle, or you can click on all panelists and attendees, and that way everybody can see it. So depending on, on the purpose of your message, you can go ahead and type there. Um, no questions in there just yet, but I do have some questions uh, based on some things that I wrote down. It sounds like to, to get a henchman, uh, stores would sign up online through the website, and it sounds like that's also where they would be able to sign up for things like the LGS promotions. Is that correct? Yeah, so the stores don't have to do anything for the LGS promotions. All they have to do is sell our product. There is nothing special that we ask a store to do um, other than sell the product. So it really is up to the customer at that point to take a copy of the receipt and send it in to us if I it happens to be an LGS promotion of that nature. Um, all they have to do is scan it in. We have a form that we link to each time we run one of those promotions. And yeah, like I said, the store doesn't have to do anything special other than you know carry weird product. And it does not have to just be Malifaux. It can be any of the, the product lines that we carry. Um, they all qualify for those LGS promotions. In regards to the henchmen, um, a store can direct somebody right to our website. Uh, there is a henchman link that somebody can click on and they can go ahead and they can apply. Uh, we will be asking just some very basic information and we will ask what store they're looking to work with. Um, we cross-reference that to make sure that, you know, there isn't already a, a few volunteers working out of that store. If there is, then we will reach out to the store and ask them, you know, do you still have current activity from these other folks? And so we do try to cross-reference that. Okay, great. Um, and you mentioned also the, the henchman hardcore version of the game. Is that included in the rule book or is that another um, set of information that the store would need to get from another source like the website? Uh, so we regularly release um, rules and additional tournament documents. Um, and in the very near future, uh, we will have the official Henchman Hardcore rules available on our, uh, on our website uh, through uh, what's, what we call Gaining Grounds. Um, there are uh, previous versions of it for the, uh, the uh, Malifaux Second Edition that are available right now, but uh, very soon you should have those available, uh, the, the official Third Edition Henchman Hardcore rules. Um, essentially, it's just a smaller hiring pool, and instead of masters, you would hire henchmen instead as your leaders. Got it. Okay, so it's a, a essentially a less expensive build for in the point system. Mm -hmm. Right. It's it's a great introduction to the game. The game itself takes less time. Um, there are few fewer models, and it's a, a simpler way to kind of dip your toes in. Okay. And then for players and stores who have second edition product or who have second edition models, is there a, a conversion kit or is there free information that they need in order to make sure that those models are usable in the third edition? So they can take the approach of a couple of different ways. Um, the end user can purchase from a store a faction pack, and this included all of the cards for that faction. Um, 
this was one of the products that came and went real quick. We've already gotten the reprint of it, so it, they're available. But the faction packs were broken down by faction, and it was every card that you needed um, for that faction. So if somebody already owned Metal Gammon, they would buy that faction. They would have every card that they needed. And this took care of just about everybody. If there is a store that still has second edition product, they can reach out to their sales rep with a list of what they have. Um, I just need somebody to follow up with me and we will get those cards sent out to the store so that they can update their product. Um, that is um, a service that we offer with the third edition. Okay, and is that something that you do uh, yourself or do you want distributors like GTS uh, assisting you by collecting that information? The, the update we can do either way. We can either send it directly to the store um, or we can send them back to the warehouse so that it can go out with their next order that's processed through GTS. Okay. Great. Um, scenario, it is a scenario driven game, uh, objective driven. So are those objectives, do you have scenarios that come as part of a uh, a monthly promotion or are those in the rule book? Where do, where do stores get that information? So the base uh, strategies and schemes, which are basically our fancy name of objectives in the game, um, those are available in the core rule book. And uh, we release uh, generally annual uh, adjustments and additions to those to keep the gameplay fresh. Um, so um, those yeah, like I said, those are available in the the, uh, the rule book right now, and in that gaining grounds document that I was talking about earlier, um, new uh, strategies and schemes uh, will become available. Okay, excellent. Um, and then as far as keeping product in print, do you have plans to keep the entire line uh, continuously in stock, or is there kind of like a, a rotating cycle of product that's being um, printed so and then reprinted? Right now, um, there's the product I would consider it to be rotating. We have not re-released everything that was available in second edition yet into the third edition packaging. So one of the things that stores might have noticed, um, the, the skew count for third edition is much less than what it was in, in second edition. And so what the design team did when they were putting focus into the keyword is what plays well together? What, you know, what is an end user gonna want to have on the table? And so by taking these keywords and aesthetics, we've been able to go through and put a lot of those smaller boxes together um, just to give players kind of that, that one stop to get everything that they need or that they wanna add. Um, and so we're only, partway through the releases at this point, and you will not see everything that had already released in second edition until we get to about the middle of next year, just as we're rotating through and reintroducing that. And mixed within those reintroductions, there are new sculpts, there are new characters, there's new masters. Um, on the slide where we showed Summer Teeth, he is an existing master, but he, his sculpt was updated. And so um, just depending on, you know, what the story called for, some were updated or some are brand new. Okay. And then for, um, for Malifo and the other side, uh, are the models the same size? Are they compatible with one another or are they different scales or? It is a different scale slightly. Uh, there are larger models in the other side. Um, there are uh, what we call Titans in the game, and they are on 120 millimeter bases, so they're significantly larger. Um, same lore, similar mechanics, different models. Okay, are they, is there any cross compatibility where you could use the other side characters as, as leaders in Malifo or vice versa? There will be some cross uh, with uh, the starter box. You'll see some characters overlap, um, but we haven't announced anything further beyond that. Okay. Excellent. Um, those are those are the questions that I had um, set up here, and it doesn't look like uh, that we've got questions coming in. So perhaps 
questions have all been answered. If, if any of the retailers in attendance would like to go ahead and ask questions, feel, feel free to do that right now or, or um, yeah, we can move on. Yeah, we tried to provide as much information as we could as we were going through. Um, we do know that the, the transition from second to third hasn't been ideal. Um, for some folks, for some people, it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, third edition has caught us completely by surprise as far as demand and seeing all these new additional communities pop up worldwide has been uh, somewhat humbling and, and very exciting at the same time. Um, our, our design team, I think they, they hit it out of the park. They, they did a really good job and the extra time that they put into designing it, uh, which caused a little bit of a later release was absolutely worth it. Yeah, I think the, the upgrades and the, and the new models, the new um, configuration looks terrific. The packaging looks, looks lovely on the shelf, looks really great together. Uh, it's very well organized and, and uh, the game is, is a very good game. So we're, we're enjoying the success that we're seeing with it. Um, I'm hoping that more and more retailers will see that it's a value brand and something that they can get on board and, and help uh, encourage miniatures in their store and, and help those, those customers that are interested in that, that line of uh, gaming to go ahead and, and make the move. Um, the, uh, the only other question I had was, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, uh, having the longer SKU list coming out uh, towards the middle of next year. Uh, is that is that about the end point for you guys in terms of where you've got design out to, or are you have you got? Oh, out? absolutely. We, the the team is already working on releases well past that. Um, we do have a new faction coming, the Explorer Society, and so um, next year, uh, as we get into the year, we will start letting out more information as to what to expect with the Explorer Society. And that's really just the, the tip of what's coming. Um, we will be announcing kind of where we're going with all of our product lines. Next year is looking to shape up to be a really great year for us and just the Malifaux world as a whole. Great. Um, Carl Morgan does have a question. So he says, uh, is there a plan on catching up on out of stock items in the near future? So I, I assume it means uh, some of the production difficulties that you mentioned with the um, popularity of the product and, and ha not having quite enough stock in hand. Uh, are there plans to, uh, to bring that back and, and get stocked up? Yes, absolutely. We already have um, restocks in and we're actually due to have a really busy next few weeks with product coming in. And then it's just a matter of us getting it processed on this side. And we'll be working with the distributors and announcing what can be restocked at that time. There are some second edition models that are out of stock but they have not yet been announced for re-release. And those, once that information is available for re-release in what boxes they'll be in, we'll make those announcements as well. Excellent, thank you. Well, I, I really appreciate you being here. I, I really enjoy that uh, Weird has set up this kind of the whole world uh, and all the various options for playing games in that world, whether it's the, the few board games that you've put out, uh, the role-playing game, the two different types of miniature games. It's really uh, an immersive environment, something that people can, uh, once they latch into it, they're just gonna go really deep on it. So mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity for stores, retailers to carry the product line, the full line, and then and kind of capture that whole breadth of, um, breadth of customer service. So I appreciate your being here. Um, this webinar will be recorded. It has been recorded and it will be going up on YouTube probably tomorrow uh, as soon as I can get it up there, um, but we do have, we have collected all the information for the retailers that are here. So you'll be getting your, your gift as soon as we get it. It'll probably be a few weeks before uh, we can make the transition from sending, from weird sending the product to us and then out to you. So keep an eye on that. We'll keep you informed on what's going on. Um, Kelly and Kyle, I really appreciate your being here. Any final words you want to set out before we close up? Well, just thank you for your support and everything you've done. Um... GTS has done a fantastic job of supporting Weird and all of our games. So we appreciate that and keep up the good work. Yeah, thanks for having us here today. Great. Well, we appreciate it. We appreciate the partnership. And um, like we've talked about before, uh, brands are important to us. Brands are, are really kind of our guiding light. And we're, we're proud to partner with 
uh, Weird and, and the new edition of Malfo has been a, a huge success. So we're really happy to be there. Fantastic. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time to both the retailers and to Kelly and Kyle from Weird Miniatures. If you have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and, and email me. Uh, my email will be on the screen here. Uh, it's uh, sbor at gtsdistribution.com. And that last name is S B as in boy, O-O-R. So feel free to email me. This uh, recording will also include some contact information for Weird Miniatures. If you have any uh, direct contact, they'll have a website for you to go to. Thank you very much for your time. I'll return the rest of your day to you and uh, much success in your, in your daily endeavors.